over. We'll dive into it. But oftentimes the markers of a fucking fake phone call is the exact same shit that corresponds to Israeli narratives. It's almost identical to the tortured confessions that Despite our efforts to minimize civilian casualties during the strike, the fire that broke out was unex un unexpected and unintended. This is a devastating incident which we did not expect. We are investigating what caused the fire. That what are we doing? Why are we trying to do a El Ahli literally fucking months after El Ahli? Like what are they doing? What are they doing? I really, really personally thought that we were over this. You know what I mean? We were done. We were done with this because they did this so many fucking times. Is this going to be another fucking OSINT cycle? Is that what we're going to do? Is that what the is that what's happening? Thirty six thousand deaths so far. Thirty six thousand. Thirty six thousand Palestinians have been fucking ruthlessly slaughtered, and we're still having this combo. Like this is the same exact fucking combo after Al Ahli. Try to fucking misinform. Just circulate as much misinformation as possible to reorient the discourse directly back to. Well, maybe it's Hamas's fault, actually. Have you guys thought about how it's Hamas's fault? And it will. People will use it, too. It doesn't even fucking matter. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hate this so much. You're not even wrong. Evil OSIN accounts are caping again on this specific massacre. Let me, let me entertain the notion that there is ordinance like hamas ordinance that blew up for one moment okay thirty six thousand deaths let's for a brief moment suspend our disbelief and forget that israel has lied in this exact same way a million times over okay what is the uh, overarching argument here? That only Israel gets to kill Palestinians? Like, what is the attitude here? What is the fucking... What, what are we listening to? This is the exact same question I asked after, uh, after the Al-Ahli hospital. If this was pa a Palestinian misfire, what are we supposed to think? That like, well, why, we got to condemn these guys, you know? We got to condemn these guys. They killed their own people. So what about the fucking 36,000 people that you killed? That's okay? Like, what are, what's happening here? Only we, as Israel, get to kill Palestinians. No one else. Is that the argument? Like, what the fuck? The only time Israel has smoke for dead Palestinians is if it is what they are claiming is, is Palestinian rockets. Why would Hamas hide in civilian tents in Rafah? I mean, Israel has to remove Hamas from the West Bank so the Palestinians can see the top of the hour outbreak in peace. Jesus Christ. Why did I read that? That wasn't even fucking good. Jesus Christ. Oh, I hate this. I hate this so much. I mean, not the ad break debate. That guy got me fair and square. I'm uh, I'm not on my tippy top game here because obviously like, you know, I did a podcast earlier. I'm not fucking paying attention. Uh, it's, it is technically 153. I wasn't expecting one, uh, but whatever. I'll, I'll serve her regardless. He fucking got me. He got my ass. There's a three minute ad break coming to you now. If you no longer want to see those ads, you already know what to do. You must subscribe for $5 or free with the Twitch Prime. Here's the three minute ad break now. Yeah, I'm like looking at the fucking atrocities 
that are uh, beyond human comprehension. Man-made horror is beyond human comprehension, and sometimes I forget that at the top of the hour, I might get jubated. That resulted in this tragic loss of life. The investigation is ongoing. I will now share the facts that we've gathered so far. As you can see, in our aerial... I haven't even looked at the phone call, and my immediate reaction is it's most likely fake because Israel has faked phone calls a million times over. We'll dive into it, but oftentimes the markers of a fucking fake phone call is the exact same shit that corresponds to Israeli narratives. It's almost identical to the tortured confessions that they film, where they get, like, Palestinian people to that they've apprehended and very clearly beat the shit out of to say things like, uh, yeah, we're Hamas, actually. We're just like Hamas, if not worse. We're bad Muslims. The goal overall is to basically... The goal there is to just humiliate uh, the, the resistance forces. It's not even a thing that is, like, uh, considered valid by anyone else for the most part. Most people look at it and go, yeah, no, that's fucking bullshit. The phone call, again... The phone call is is almost always so made up. Two Gazas on the phone, and you can't even hear the sound of drones behind either. IDF not even trying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll look at it. But usually, some of the markers is like um, Gazan, like the, the Gazan Arabic, like a Gazan... Uh, like a Gazan accent, I guess, like a Palestinian Arabic accent. They just get like a couple Druze or, or um, like whoever speaks Arabic to, to fucking do it. Back in the day, they were much better. The, the guys in dialect. Back in the day, they were much better at doing this kind of thing. Because I feel like they had more smoke. They had to like fight for it. You know what I mean? They were better at like hiding their, their genocidal ambitions and shit. Nowadays, they don't even fucking try. They just go, here, we found uh, two Gazan terrorists. Talking to one another, saying death to America. Surveillance from the time of the strike. We, are, we targeted a closed structure away from tent area. As you can see, there are no tents in the immediate vicinity of the structure that we targeted. Contrary to reports, we conducted the strike outside the area that we designated as a human. Yeah, they literally said, we're sorry, by the way. They said, uh, we didn't strike them. And then they said, oops, we did, and we're sorry. And now they're saying, oops, we didn't, we're not sorry. You know what's really ironic about this particular brand of projection, by the way? They lie in the opposite direction all the time as well. What do I mean by this? They did this whenever Hamas or any kind of Palestinian resistance group actually blows up an Israeli target. If it's near... If it's even something that they can claim that's near, even if it's an established base, they'll just close up one of the fucking crossings. Like the Eretz crossing was closed because they falsely claimed that Hamas blew up the crossing. Okay? Which was ridiculous because it's so suspicious that Hamas is doing things that just perfectly correspond to what Israel wants to do, which is to starve the entire Gazan population. Why would Hamas blow up the Eretz crossing? Oh, that's right. They didn't actually do that. They blew up a base that was two kilometers away from the Eretz crossing. And in order to punish the entire Palestinian population for, you know, uh, Hamas's combat victories, once again, they chose to close up the Eretz crossing and claim that Hamas blew it up. They did that. They literally did that. They did that like a month ago. And then they do this exact same thing on the opposite direction as well. Why do people keep believing these shits? A couple different reasons. One, we submit to authority because the Western mind is, is the Caucasoid mind is particularly predisposed to being cucked to power. We love being servile. We love submitting to authority. So that's number one. This is an organ of a, of a well-established democratic government that is within the confines of American hegemonic power. So, of course, 
as Caucasoids, we fucking see that and we go, oh, my lord, my lord, well, that's some good guy. Other leaders have told me he's a good guy, my lord, so I believe him. Right? So that's number one. The other reason is because a lot of people don't give a fuck about who they're killing. So they desperately want to not feel bad about all the death and destruction that Israel is causing. Okay? So they're desperately looking. They're desperately looking for any, for any kind of thing that they can grab onto to be like, no, 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 no. They were asking for it. Please, please. I gotta say, as a black Caribbean man, I love when you use Dr. Umar's talking points. Lema fail cracks me the fuck up. I mean, I don't think Dr. Umar uh, invented Caucasoid, but uh, I am a fan of his. But regardless. A humanitarian area and called civilians to evacuate to. Our strike was over a kilometer bro, and a half. Bro, motherfuckers are not even trying. This dude literally just has 1488 in his username. Congratulations, you Nazi fucking piece of shit. Half away from the El Muasi humanitarian area, what we call the safer zone. Here is... Huh, wait. Oh my God, bro. Bro, first of all, the safer zone remember they call it the safer zone and not a safe zone why do they call it the safer zone and not a safe zone you might ask that is because a safe zone is a legal designation and they do not have the interest in providing safety in the safe zone so they try to say oh it's a safer zone as in it's safer than the other zone that we're blowing up but that doesn't mean you'll be safe there either and you won't get running water you won't get like uh, you, you won't get drinkable water, for example. Like in a safe zone, you're supposed to provide the civilians water, electricity, certain amenities, certain things for survival. And of course, a guarantee that they will not blow you up. Okay? So they go, uh, safer zone. They play fast and loose with this, uh, with this narrative. Where Hamas claims we struck. And here is where we conducted our strike against the Hamas senior commanders outside the area designated as a humanitarian area. Our aerial surveillance was filming prior to the strike in order to minimize civilian alarm. Here is the footage from our strike of the specific structure where the senior Hamas command... Yeah, no other strikes happened, by the way, just that we're meeting remember going back to al ahli which we still do not have any conclusive evidence on whether or not it was a uh, misfired palestinian islamic jihad rocket or an israeli artillery strike that hit like a gas tank or whatever the fuck okay we do not have any real evidence to this day and we probably never will but what did israel do after al ahli what did Israel do after Al-Ahli? They immediately said, we were not operating in the area. That was a lie. They lied. Then they came out with a phone conversation that was also immediately disproven to be uh, truthful. It was also a lie. Okay? Then, then they said, first they said it was Hamas. Well, first they celebrated it and said, there are Hamas terrorists at the hospital, so we had to fucking blow it up. Then they went back on it and were like, okay, just kidding. It wasn't a, it was actually a, a, a misfire. It was a misfire rocket, okay, that blew up. Meanwhile, Osin Andes were fucking running around, literally coming up with the dumbest fucking theories. Like, oh, this was actually an intercepted rocket that fell on the hospital. Made no goddamn sense. But it didn't matter. Everybody went along with it. Everybody went along with it for days. How am I to believe Israel ever, ever again? How? I have to be literally the biggest Islamophobe on the fucking planet to ever believe a single fucking thing that the Israeli government says. How? How am I supposed to look at this critically and go, hmm, let me take what they're saying seriously. Now, everyone that desperately wants to poison the well and has said that I'm an Islamist fundamentalist, that I'm like fucking, uh, you know, 
a, a Palestinian jihadi or whatever the fuck, whatever kind of like racist bullshit has desperately tried to make this seem like my analysis on this is simply motivated by some ancient anti-Semitism, even though ironically, those very same people who say that are literally anti-Semitic, okay? But even if I did not have, you know, many, many years of covering this conflict and covering many different iterations of these sieges and this ethnic cleansing, okay, which I do, if I was looking at this with fresh eyes, okay, if, I, if I'm looking at this with fresh eyes, since October 7, there is no fucking way that I can trust what the fucking Israeli government is saying. That level of skepticism is genuinely healthy for the record, and you should exercise that for America as well. As, as I do, as you know. For example, America, when we're doing our many different invasions and occupations and whatnot, we will routinely lie about this shit too. We did this. We did this not that long ago under the Brandon administration. When we were leaving Kabul, we lobbed one last fucking tomahawk for all the good times in the courtyard. If you remember, what did the DOD say about it? The DOD said, oh, we didn't actually kill a whole family. It was a, it was a terrorist. Okay? It was a terrorist. Turns out it was an aid worker and not a terrorist at all. We just massacred a fucking Afghan family of a humanitarian aid worker for no fucking reason. Faulty intel. That came out afterwards due to the many different investigations that occurred. Do the brilliant work at the time of the New York Times Visual Investigations Unit. But that didn't stop the DOD from lying because that's what governments do. So remove the, the shackles that you have in your mind when you analyze uh, what the Israeli government is saying that cause you to think, am I being anti-Semitic here? The Israeli government is not Judaism, okay? It is the government. It is a government that is currently doing ethnic cleansing. And I personally understand, given that this is a progressive community that cares about bigotry, that does not want anti-Semitism to thrive, there is always that, that notion in our minds, because you've heard it so many fucking times, because Israel presents itself as the Jewish country, the Jewish state. It has to be a Jewish state. It is protecting Judaism. It is protecting Judaism as a monolith. So when that So when that fucking... Shut the fuck up, chatter. I didn't say shack... I didn't say shekels. I said shackles. Remove the shackles from your mind. Like the chains. I'm explaining what that means. This is not an opportunity for you to fucking uh, be weird about uh, uh, Jewish people, okay? In any case, as I was stating... As I was stating, you can't go two minutes uh, talking about Gaza and children being slaughtered without having to talk about anti-Semitism. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I do care about, I do care about making sure that people understand that this is not coming from an anti-Semitic place because people will cynically weaponize anti-Semitism to both defend the actions of Israel, a genocidal fascist state, and will also offensively claim that Israel is doing these actions of genocide, ethnic cleansing, and apartheid for Judaism. I'm covering this in the fucking Western world. So, of course, speaking to a, mo speaking to a Western audience, I'm going to cover that aspect of it. Just stop in to say you're a fucking loser. By the time you read this, I'll be gone, you fucking loser. Yeah, dude, my life is so shitty. Thank you. Thank you for addressing how much of a loser I am. You, on the other hand, you're very cool that you bravely came in to say that. Very sane, very normal, very cool. Every cool person that you know is doing... <laughs> every cool person you know is making sock accounts to go to their least favorite Twitch streamer's chat to be like, you're a fucking loser, dog. <laughs> so cool they run away preemptively, I know. Anyway, 
After posting about the Rafa massacre today, my Jewish son, his mother asked me to please stop posting about Pakistan. That's hilarious. Okay. Let's the strike continue. was conducted using two munitions with small warheads suited for this targeted strike. We're talking about munition with 17 kilos of explosive material. This is the smallest munition that our jets can use. Following this strike, a large fire ignited for reasons that are still being investigated. Our munition alone could not have ignited a fire of this size. I want to repeat it. Our munition alone could not have ignited a fire of this size. Our investigation seeks to determine what may have caused such a large fire to ignite. We are looking into all possibilities, including the option that weapons stored in a compound next to our target, which we did not know of, may have ignited as a result of the strike. Yeah, it's uh, Hamas once again. Man, it's crazy. It's Hamas again, bro. That's crazy. It's always, anytime the Western world gives a shit about uh, about Israel's misconduct during its like normal process of ethnic cleansing, it's always Hamas. <laughs> and it, and what is really indecent about this is that the media will report it as fact without conducting any investigation whatsoever. That is gross, dude. That is fucking gross. That makes us even more culpable in this, by the way. That makes Western media even more culpable in this ethnic cleansing campaign. And it's not just like Al-Ahli, but it's also just like the flower massacre. If you recall, during the flower massacre, what did the, thi what did the Israeli government do immediately? Oh, it wasn't us. It was Hamas terrorists that were fighting in the area and that is why our people were fighting against it's like and then we saw it was looters and hamas and then we saw what happened it was a stampede uh where uh, many of the palestinians they had bullet holes in them uh, during the stampede it's every single time and it's here's how you know it's fucking bullshit too by the way Okay, I don't know if this particular instance, there's any veracity to what they're saying, but it's ridiculous for me to immediately not be skeptical, especially considering that in every single fucking circumstance since October 7th, when, when the Western world goes, oh shit, that's a bridge too far for us, not the 36,000, but this instance, that's a little bit too cruel for us. They go, oh, it must've been Hamas. They did this with Shireen Abu Akhlek as well. You have to remember. You have to remember something important here. They only do this when people care. They only do this when people actually do pay attention to like one specific atrocity. Too many people saw the decapitated baby. Too many people saw it. That was not great for Israel's PR. Okay? Okay. So, of course, they have to do counter-propaganda by muddying the waters. And the media will fucking willingly go along with it without conducting their own investigations into the matter. World Central Kitchen. First thing that they claimed was, oh, we, we shot them because uh, they had armed assailants. They were literally on a fucking safe route after engaging in deconfliction with the Israeli military and they still fucking blew them up. Triple tap them. Okay? It should be noted, Hamas has been operating from this area since October 7th. Here, in this satellite image, 43 meters Every from the time. structure we target. Couple like official looking bullshit uh, drone shots and that's all it takes that's all it fucking takes baby for the western world to be like yep see see it was Hamas it was Hamas you can see Hamas rocket launchers 
Hamas fired rockets from these launchers at Israel during their massacre on October 7th. We are also assessing footage documented by Gazans on the night of the strike posted on social media, which appear to show secondary explosions, indicating that there may have been weapons in the area. Our signal intelligence intercepted some phone calls that reinforce this concern, raising the possibility that weapons stored in a nearby compound caught fire. Here is one of those phone calls. Wait, we can't even see it. Because... Wait, where is the, where is the, uh... does anyone else have it? 9,000 likes, of course. Yeah, they, that can literally just be a propane tank or even bags of flour. You just make your shit up. No, no, no. It is a uh, weapons uh, cachet. You don't understand. Uh, flour can be used as a weapon. Remember the flour massacre caused by Hamas. Don't investigate it further. Yeah, isn't it wonderful how they always, how they always happen to find a phone conversation that identically parallels what they're now saying like they didn't invest they did not fucking intercept phone conversation they never have phone conversations intercepted at the moment of the strike it's always like it always takes like a day but they immediately are able to find a phone conversation that details exactly what their argument is it starts off with, and they say that they, Hamas terrorists that were bombed, sat in a meeting and that there is a facility. And in addition, they had ammunition because all the ammunition that started exploding. <laughs> Bags of money were flying in the air, Abu Rafik. These ammunition that exploded were really ours? Yes, this is an ammunition warehouse. I tell you, it exploded. I mean, the Jewish bombing wasn't strong. It was a small missile because it didn't create a large hole. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but <laughs> the Jewish bombing wasn't strong. It was a small hole because it didn't create a large hole. And then the second speaker goes, Yo, it, it is really crazy how honorable and how moral they are. First speaker, yes, because they are the most moral army, unlike Hamas, which we hate. Gur, says the second speaker, the only group of people I hate more than Hamas is Kamir Khan of the ICC. Yes, first speaker says, I absolutely despise Hamir Khan. The fact that that bastard is trying to prosecute Yoav Gallant who has conducted the most honorable, most moral military campaign in Gaza. Makes me so mad. Second speaker says, I hope that Israel finishes off Hamas and also kills my family in the process because I think it would be valid if my family died. First speaker says, what? You want your family to die? Second speaker says, yes, if they died in the hands of Israel, it would be valid because... They would be doing the honorable thing, which is killing Hamas. And then they both say, I love Israel. Did you know Tel Aviv is a perfect destination for a gaycation? As an audio listener, I have no idea how much of this is ad-libbing and how much of this is real. It's all, I'm fucking joking, obviously. Well, I'm not joking when, <laughs> when the phone conversation they quote-unquote intercepted was, I mean, the Jewish bombing wasn't strong. It was a small missile. Because it didn't create a large hole. <laughs> and afterwards, a lot of secondary explosions. <laughs> and they say that they, Hamas terrorists that were bombed, sat in a meeting and that there is a... Oh, it goes back to the beginning. Okay. They end the conversation by saying, I'm Israel Chai. Yeah. Yeah, they did this already. Hamas operative too. They're saying it belongs to Palestinian Islamic Jihad. It's from us, Hamas Operative 1. It looks like it, Hamas Operative 2. Hamas Operative 1, who says this? 
They are saying that the shrapnel from the missile is lo local shrapnel and not like Israeli shrapnel. What are you saying, bleep? But God bless, it couldn't have found another place to explode? This was after the Al Ahli uh, hospital explosion. Isn't it fucking awesome how convenient it is for Israel? I mean, it's crazy. Isn't it fucking awesome that it's just so convenient for Israel that there's always like a couple Palestinians having a phone conversation that uh, in the immediate aftermath of, of whatever the fuck Israel did next, where they're just like calm, collected, and simply addressing all of the facts of the matter, that it was certainly, it was certainly not Israel. Great stuff, though. Totally exonerated. I believe it. Verify the... We are working to verify the cause of the fire. It is still too early to be determined. <laughs> Yeah, bro, I, I believe it. Well, I'm convinced. I'm the dumbest person you've ever met. And it surely seems like it would be... <laughs> it surely doesn't seem like far too convenient. I've never paid attention to anything before and I will not pay attention to anything after Israel has unimaginable amounts of surveillance which they actually do they do have 24-7 drone surveillance but they can tap into every phone conversation of everyday Palestinians and Hamas militants and yet they have not been able to find any of the fucking hostages until they blow up a house where the hostages are in, and then they pick their fucking corpses out of the rubble. How can these two things exist in the same fucking place? How is that possible? Israel has Batman-level surveillance of every single phone conversation that's occurring at any given moment, but for some reason, they just can't find a single one of the fucking hostages, dude. How did they not intercept comms about October 7th but have this under 48 hours of strike? Here, I'll give you a really good answer for it. It's because they li are lying. It's because they made it up. It's because no two Palestinian men are having a conversation uh, in the middle of the fucking rubble while, like, they're, they're uh, you know, pulling their fucking family members that have turned into dust out of the encampment. They're calling each other to have a conversation about how moral Israel is and how small their rockets are. And how actually they're more mad about Hamas because that must have been a Hamas weapons depot. Yeah, we're going to talk about what they were doing before October 7, mind you. Even when we do find the cause of the fire that erupted, it won't make this situation any less tragic. We took a number of steps prior to the strike to avoid civilian casualties, aerial surveillance, from above using specific munitions and okay i do believe this guy actually can intercept hamas conversations i just don't believe that he's capable of like transcribing them though because of his the size of his fucking ears okay like this guy probably does hear anytime like a hamas militant is sneezing he's hearing it he probably heard me say this okay my man's got some fucking satellite dishes up in there, okay? Jesus Christ, dude. Aimed at minimizing collateral damage, delaying the attack in order to further assess expected civilian presence. It's like, you know how people will say like, oh, um, body shaming is not all right because like your words might not reach his ears, but it will hear, but it will, some chatters with big old ears will hear what you have to say. It's like, no, my words will reach his ears, man. He will fucking hear me. All the way from Tel Aviv, okay? That's a bit anti-Semitic. No, it's not!
No. There are certain things that people have made uh, jokes about and have used in anti-Semitic depictions. Large ears is not one of them. Okay? It is not like a like a racist Jewish stereotype uh, that that uh, he looks like Dumbo. Okay, that's just him. That's him and him only. Ain't nobody got fucking flaps like that. And other means, this incident is being investigated by the general stuff fact-finding and assessment mechanism, an independent and professional body that is investigating the circumstances of those killed in the area of the strike. This investigation will be swift, comprehensive, oh, yeah. and transparent. I believe it. Yeah, definitely. One of the just said he's the Israeli Air Force. Yeah, he flies with those shits, okay? That's what it is. Broken here thoughts. That's why he knew. He knew that it was Hamas because he heard and he heard the thoughts of Hamas. Our war is against Hamas, not against the people of Gaza, which is why we convey deep sorrow for this tragic loss of life. Question. Yeah, dude. <laughs> he is deeply, deeply saddened by this tragic loss of life. Bro, you killed 36,000 before. Fuck you mean you're deeply sad about this tragic loss of life? No, you're not. The only reason why you're even saying any of these things, which you're saying reluctantly, it's so funny that he has to like get up here and apologize, reluctantly, mind you, because the Western world saw it and we're like, oh my God, you literally decapitated a fucking baby. That is insane. So then he has to turn around and be like, oh, we are so saddened by this tra tragic loss of life. It is so fucked up. Oh, uh, but uh, uh, 36,000 before, that is Hamas. <laughs> Terror in Rafa. There is still Hamas battalions in Rafa. A couple of days ago, launchers from Rafa fired to Tel Aviv. Millions of people... Yep. Went into bomb shelters. This is a actually very good point by Jenk, which is exactly what I'm trying to explain. Israel just murdered another 21 people in a tank camp that was supposed to be in the civilian evacuation zone near Rafah. But since there was no video of children on fire this time, they haven't bothered apologizing. Congress wants to give Netanyahu a standing ovation for this. He's absolutely right. <laughs> because Israel does not ever call into question the record at all when there isn't enough stink about the people that they're murdering. Just like the 36,000 people that they murdered. Just like the 200 aid workers that they fucking slaughtered before the seven World Central Kitchen aid workers that they slaughtered. Notice how they never had to talk about how it was Hamas when they killed 200 aid workers before the seven? Because... When you don't give a fuck in the Western world, they don't even care to do propaganda on it. There is still turn Rafa. Uh, today and the day before, we have uh, uh, again detected tunnels on the Philadelphia corridors. Those are tunnels going to Sinai. We are. T Wait, they killed 36 people just now yesterday? No, man. No. Over the course of the past eight months. And I, I believe that that is also an undercount, regardless. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I, uh, I wrote about this as well. Here, this is what, this is what our piece of shit had to say. So how does this not violate the red line that the president laid out? As I said, we don't want to see a major ground operation. We haven't seen that at this point. How many more? Even, bro, bro. Like, he, that's CNN, bro. Right? I, I think that's our ABC. Whatever. One of the one of the fucking one of the big ones. I forget what his name is right now. I, or CBS. Yeah, that's CBS. You're right. It is CBS. I literally named every fucking other one. Ed O'Keefe. Thank you, Thamasius. That is Ed O'Keefe with 
CBS. When you got Ed O'Keefe with CBS openly rolling his eyes at what you are saying, when his primary function is literally to be a stenographer for the things that you're saying, you have to understand how you are. His job is quite literally never to investigate, okay? Douchey and the other Fox people are more contentious to the Democratic White House than Ed O'Keefe is, okay? His, his job literally is to just go, okay, I'm writing exactly what you said here. When you are that fucking far gone as Kirby is, and you are that bad at trying to massage the narrative, even Ed O'Keefe is rolling his fucking eyes at you. Pete Douchey over here. Look at him. Look at that douchebag sitting right next to him. Wonder what he has to say. Charred corpses does he have to see before the president considers a change of policy? We don't want to see a single more innocent life taken. And I can That's this is unceremonious, okay? This is not normal. Do you understand? The death and destruction that we are watching unfold is also not normal, but you have to remember. You have to fucking understand something. Ed, o Ed O'Keefe saying how many more charred corpses does the White House have to see to enforce a red line? I've never fucking heard a person whose entire job is to be a part of the fucking White House press corps come out with this level of contention when, when there is a Democratic president in charge. Like, I'm going to run that back. So how does this not violate the red line that the president laid out? I got a piece. As I said, we don't want to see a major ground operation. We haven't seen that at this point. How many more charred corpses does he have to see before the president considers a change in policy? We don't want to see a single more innocent life taken. And I kind of take a little offense at the question. No civilian casualties is the right number of civilian casualties. And this is not something that we've turned a blind eye to, nor has it been something we've ignored or neglected to raise with our Israeli counterparts, including, Ed, this weekend as a result of this particular strike. Now, they're investigating it, so let's let them investigate it and see what they come up with. But the president doesn't have, like, a personal limit to this? The president has been very clear and very direct about what our expectations are for Israeli operations in Rafah specifically, but in Gaza writ large. We don't support, we won't support a major ground operation in Rafah. Uh, and we've, again, been very consistent on that. And the president said uh, that should that occur, then it might make him have to make different decisions in terms of support. We haven't seen that happen at this and point. Why not have him come out and say that himself? The president has been speaking to leaders throughout the region on a regular basis. He has been addressing you guys in various fora. Uh, you've got plenty of opportunities to talk to the president, including, I might add, in a press conference last week. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Biden, by the way, is noticeably absent. Isn't that crazy? President receives the daily brief. And then that's it. It's very strange. It's very strange that he has been noticeably absent since the uh, since the ICC and the ICJ decisions. Well, no, not since the ICC. He wasn't absent after the ICC decision. He literally said, it is unacceptable. What the ICC is doing is unacceptable. But since the ICJ ceasefire decision, which is, by the way, directly trying to enforce the red lines that Biden drew for Israel, he has not said a fucking thing. 
talking to the Egyptians, we are demolishing those tunnels, we are working in a precise and targeted way. We haven't seen that motherfucker. Forty percent of Rafa's buildings have been destroyed or severely damaged. Your media plays this fucking dumb for free. They just won't challenge them. Yes, that's absolutely correct. That's why I say, in order to get more valid intel about what's going on in Israel, I would much rather trust Israeli media. Like I would much rather trust a rabid fucking ultra nationalist Zionist journalist than I would a dumb fuck in the American press corps. Because the dumb fucks in American press corps are, one, super far removed from the conversation. Two, literally will just repeat whatever the fuck the State Department is saying. Straight up. By the way, there's still hostages in Rafa. And we need to make sure that we do everything we can to bring our hostages back home. Shit, I'm kind of